Welcome. Welcome to the Invest Barbados webinar on diaspora investment opportunities. We've got a number of attendees from a number of locations all over the, the, the world. We have our panelists here with us today, and we have members of the Invest Barbados team. Our CEO, Ms. Kayanne Brathwood, will do introductory remarks and like to say a few words to those here in attendance. Thank you very much, uh, Joel. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the team at Invest Barbados and our guest speakers, we thank you for gathering with us virtually to explore financial opportunities available to the diaspora. We appreciate that you are already familiar with our land and the quality of life to be found here. We know that you are proud of our management of the COVID-19 pandemic and our efforts to flatten the curve while simultaneously keeping our borders open. And many of you gathered just last week to wish us a happy 54th, a celebration of our social, economic and political stability and our continued evolution as a small island with big ambitions. Through this webinar, however, we wish to share with you some nuggets that you may not be as familiar with, existing and emerging opportunities through which you can play an integral role in the continued growth and national development of Barbados. In the next hour, we will focus on personal financial options, while also touching on other exciting opportunities, including charities that would welcome your support now more than ever. So, Enjoy the sampling that we are about to serve. Know that if anything mentioned here piques your interest, our team members are available for one-on-one -on -one conversations. You have an open invite to connect with us. You are also invited to visit our website at www.investbarbados.org, where we have created a space just for you to note all the opportunities at a glance. Click on Investing in Barbados. The drop-down list has investment opportunities for the diaspora. We value you and we miss meeting with you in person. But know that like this rock, we all call home, we are here for you. May today's exploration prove beneficial. I thank you for gathering and I thank our speakers in advance for the contributions they are about to make. So without further ado, over to you, Joel. Thank, thank you very much. Um, as I said, we have a number of panelists here, here today. And I can attest, uh, uh, Kayan, to the fact that the, your, your Invest Barbados team uh, globally is very responsive to members like, like us in the diaspora. So I pass that invitation on and, 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 and uh, underscore that. Um, today, we've got uh, four uh, panelists. You can see them on the screen. Our first panelist is gonna be uh, Marlon Yard. And Marlon has been with the Barbados Stock Exchange and, and, and its subsidiary, the Barbados Central Securities Depository, since November 2003. Um, I've uh, had the pleasure of sharing the stage with him in, uh, for a couple of uh, Invest Barbados events. And uh, I'd like to invite him to take the mic and, and jump in, set the tone for the rest of us. Joel, thank you for the opportunity speaking and I also want to thank Invest Barbados. Uh, Invest Barbados has always been very municipal to the BSC and to me personally with every opportunity given to speak about what we do at the Barbados Stock Exchange and I, I want to thank them once more. I want to thank you the, the attendees to this session and I look and I'm hoping that I can share information with you that would be would pique your interest and, and be of use to you at some point in the future. What I want to cover this more this afternoon is financial investment opportunities available to um, not only per, per, per persons in Barbados, but throughout the diaspora. I'm hoping I can get through uh, all of these slides, but there are some key things I want to cover. I'm going to run, run through a number of topics. First, I'm going to share with you at a high level, the importance of capital markets and the role of the Barbados Stock Exchange in, in those markets. Um, I'm gonna talk about our exchange and, our, and in particular our international securities market, the Barbados Treaty Network, and why our strategy of pursuing international recognition is, is a complement to that. And finally, what our, what our plans are uh, going forward for 2020 and 2021. I'll close with a, a summary of the topics that we will cover. So the importance of capital markets. Capital markets channel savings and investments between suppliers of capital 
and issuers of, 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 of and users of capital. The, I like to say the, 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 there's three main parties or participants in the capital markets, the three I's, the issuers, the investors, and the intermediaries. Um, what the, 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 the suppliers of capital, uh, the suppliers of capital are the, are the investors. They uh, invest in, in particular instruments. The intermediaries allow the financial, the persons who need capital to get capital. So the term capital market in a nutshell describes the system of allocating capital in the economy. Suppliers of capital known as investors and users of capital known as the borrowers are, are oftentimes, which are oftentimes businesses, but also governments and even individuals. So financial intermediaries bring those, both the suppliers of capital and the issuers of capital um, to, together to be able to meet their needs. The, the persons who need capital obviously need it for their businesses to develop, to grow, um, to, to get into new projects. And the investors obviously are looking for opportunities to invest their cash and make a reasonable return on their economic investment. So what is the role of the stock exchange? Stock exchange brings suppliers of capital and users of capital together. So why exactly stock exchanges are important? Can we as individuals de just deal with companies directly? Can I just trade shares directly with my friends? Well, yes, you maybe you can, but you would not get the best possible price for your shares. The capital markets allow for the best possible price discovery of shares, and it creates liquidity for your shares that you might have in um, that you might have bought from a company. So, so what does that mean exactly? You might want to, you might have invested in a company. At some point in time, you want to convert your shares into cash. You go what the capital markets do, or what the stock exchange do, is provide that market where all buyers and all sellers could come together to be able to trade shares. Those who want to get their cash, liquidate their shares into cash can do so with persons who are who wants to buy into a particular company. So stock exchanges can help by removing the opacity and, and effectively create a true value for your securities. Essentially, we act as a bridge between market actors and individual investors or institutional and list institutional investors and listed companies. Effectively, our facilitation of a buy and sell ecosystem for the secondary market allows for dynamic, transparent, and price discovery of the company's shares. We are a local exchange with global ties. You will see that the Barbados Stock Exchange is a member of a number of, of international bodies, including the World Federation of Exchanges. In 2016, however, we decided to expand our operational focus with the launch of our international securities market. So not only do we have a market for local securities, local and regional securities, but we have a market for international securities. The international securities market is known, known affectionately as the ISM, specifically designed for listing securities in hard currencies by companies that may or may not be within Barbados. This market has already, has already been a great addition to the toolkit for professional operators in Barbados. So why the ISM? The ISM is providing, is, is provides a, a dynamic market for us here at the exchange, giving us access to wider participant base and, 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 and can touch even wider markets, which can give an opportunity for persons in the diaspora to invest. And the opportunities for investing are in hard currencies. So why Barbados, and the, as it relates to the international securities market? Barbados has a treaty network that allows for the effective structuring of transactions. Further, Barbados is laser focused on working with quality companies of substance on our shores we, we, we too at the BSC are similarly focused on listing quality companies on our new enhanced and for our new enhanced investor base. Finally, the, as it relates to the, the international securities market, finally, we are fortunate to have the enduring support of many organizations, 
As described by the rules of the ISM, we have local companies designated as listing sponsors for the purpose of attracting and vetting and supporting a prospective listed company. Our rules mandate that a company must retain a listing sponsor in order to be listed on the international securities market. And the listing sponsors of, our, of, of their choosing will assist throughout both the application process and the ultimate life cycle of listing on, on our uh, international securities market. There are currently five listing sponsors, Centurion ISM Services. This is a company created out of the legal firm Chancery Chambers. List Assist, an entity created by the, of the, out of the legal firm of Clark Giddings and Farmer, Deloitte Barbados, DGM Trust, and ISM Sponsor, Serv ISM sponsor Services. And this is, a, this is a, 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 a listing sponsor created out of the Lex Caribbean law firm. So we have well-established law firms and professionals, including accounting firms, who are listing sponsors for the ISM. Now, I had mentioned earlier, I think I referenced earlier the fact that one of the things that we have moved towards is being able to gain international recognition. Next slide. As mentioned before, securing international exchange recognition is our contemporary focus. We are pleased to report that we are now duly recognized as a recognized stock exchange by Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs out of, land, out of the UK. This designation, was achieved on the 2nd of April, 2019, and was conferred in the UK under section 1005 of the Income Tax Act 2007 of the UK. So why is this important? A material implication has arisen as a result. For securities residing in any of the BSC's market, the HMRC de de definition of either listed or not listed will apply to the purposes of legislation in the UK. So in plain English, this means that the legal definition of being listed, which would normally hold only if securities were listed in the UK, will still hold when UK companies decide to list securities on our ISM. By being recognized directly by HMRC, we effectively have become an extension of the UK's capital markets. This will certainly be a boon for our markets. Additionally, securities will still retain their inherent coverage under the securities legislation here in Barbados. You can therefore see why attaining this designation is highly beneficial for us. As a result, we are able to now offer elig eligibility for BSC listed securities to be included in both UK pension funds and UK individual savings accounts. The potential for inherit inherited tax allowance to accrue to UK holders of BSC listed securities and C holders of some holders of satisfying BSC listed debt securities to avail, to avail themselves to the quoted your bond exemption, meaning a mechanism that ensures an exemption from withholding tax on their distributions. Further, while the benefits above are outlined for investors, there are of course clear benefits for issuers, whether local, regional, or international in, in origin. Listing securities on the BSC's HMRC recognized markets can provide market eligibility for them to be offered directly as part of a package offering to the gamut of investors residing in the UK. B, companies looking to finance acquisitions can use the BSC's HMRC recognition, recognized markets for structured finance transactions. We envision a growth in the use of special purpose vehicles, which are subsidiary bankruptcy remote entities that can be used for their risk, either risk of sharing securitization, property sales, or asset transfer. And by lending funds through the BSC's HMRC's recognized market, UK companies can enhance their access to global capital. This is largely due to the fact that international investors can receive investment payments without deduction as a result of availing themselves to the quoted um, quoted um, European um, bonds, exempt bonds. We recently listed a security on the international securities market um, coming out of London to the, to the, to the, with a value of one point, just, just over 1 billion um, Barbados dollars, 533 um, UK pounds. Next slide, please. So the, the importance of international recognitions the BSC intends by the end of 2020 to secure 
the same status for our Canadian Ministry of Finance. We've already submitted an application to the Ministry of Finance in Canada um, to become a recognized stock exchange in the Canadian market. And the same the similar benefits will occur for persons investing out of the Canadian diaspora and companies listing on our exchange um, as, as we'll have for, for the UK investors and issuers. So what is our plan for 2020, 2021? 2021, I know is a strange year for all of us. Next slide, please. The BSE, however, remains on track to accomplish the key goals for the following year. One particular goal I would highlight is our pending platform, pending pilot platform for the, for the listing and trading of digital assets. Digital assets are a burgeoning phenomenon. Essentially, they are securities but issued by a blockchain framework, which allows for even greater transparency for investors and listing, and listing companies, and easier oversight for regulatory authorities. We will be launching a pilot project for the, in the new year to work on technical aspects of facilitating digital asset trading. One clear benefit we anticipate will be the ability to trade and settle transactions and payments in, maximum, in, in a maximum few hours opposed to days like we, we do presently. So in conclusion, capital markets are, critical, are critically important. They facilitate the transparent, the transfer of capital between those that have it to those who need it. Two, stock exchanges can help create liquidity in capital markets by aggregating users and suppliers of capital, thereby allowing for easier price discovery, which leads to a true marketplace, a true marketplace between listed companies and buyers and sellers of shares. The Barbados Treaty Network allows for comprehensive corporate structuring through the use, using Barbados as a conduit for capital. This network is extremely attractive for prospective listed companies as they realize they can, issue, they can access a wider suite of bespoke services beyond simply, simply issuing on our ISM. And conversely, the BSE's pursuit of international recognition have, will have the benefit or great assistance for companies domiciled in Barbados, should they originate from one of our specific um, recognition partners or jurisdictions, yet, yet be domiciled in Barbados, an ISM listing will only strengthen their substance arguments with their regulators in their hometown and provide opportunities for persons in diaspora to continue to, to take, take, take advantage of the investment opportunities in Barbados. I thank you and I am open to questions in the question and answer period. Thank you, Joel. Thank you, Marlon. Thank you for underscoring the uh, well-regulated environment that uh, has been created. And we thank you for your leadership there as well. International recognition, all of that brings confidence for, uh, for people in the, in the diaspora. Um, I like the fact that you talk about the you know, regulations and listings and investment opportunities, they are there. And, and also the financial, uh, uh, in, uh, the, the financial opportunities this provides to, to companies in Barbados as well. I'm gonna move on and uh, introduce our next speaker, which is Mark Young. And Mark has uh, 30 years experience in financial services across multiple centers. As a CEO of CaraLend, uh, it's the first peer-to-peer -peer lending and online lending platform company in the Caribbean. He's gonna to talk to us about this. And I know that he, he has a tr tremendous background having worked for uh, CIBC, First Caribbean, and I believe Barclays as, as well. So Mark, I'm uh, gonna turn it over to you. Thank you, Joel. And I uh, really appreciate the opportunity from Invest Barbados to be here today to speak to the people on the line uh, from the diaspora about Caridend and what we do. This uh, presentation normally takes about an hour, so I'm going to try and cram it into 10 minutes, as we've been asked. Uh, so if I go speak very quickly or uh, skip slides very quickly, uh, please don't be worried. All of this information is on our website at caridend.com. And we also hold regular webinars, uh, which are an hour long, to be able to learn a lot more about Caridend and what we do. 
So uh, if you are in the United Kingdom, you might recognize Zopa on your screen. If you're in the United States, you might recognize Funding Circle. If you are in Canada, you might recognize Borrowwell. They're all peer-to-peer -peer companies, peer-to-peer uh, -peer lending companies uh, across the globe. And uh, if you bring me the next slide, that's what Caroline does. Caroline brings peer-to-peer -peer lending to the Caribbean and specifically to the Barbados for the very first time. Peer-to-peer -peer lending at its heart is very, very simple. It's just connecting people who want to borrow money with people who have got money to invest and doing it all online safely and securely. Obviously, there's a lot more to it behind the scenes, the technology we use and how we make it happen. But at its heart, it's just as simple as that, bringing people together, people who want to invest with people who want to borrow and doing it all online. The team behind it, well, Joel mentioned that I'm a recovering banker, 25 years with Barclays and First Caribbean and CIBC, 18 of those years in the Caribbean, uh, living and working here in, uh, in 17 different countries that the bank was in. Uh, I set up uh, Caribbean three, four years ago with Mark Linehan, an ex Digicel director, similar to me, he spent 15 years across the Caribbean. Last year, we partnered with Victoria Mutual, the biggest building society in Jamaica, to expand our business to Jamaica. Um, so we are also in Jamaica now, but only for the borrowing side, not the investing side. We also brought another local partner, College Pakistan. Because of the technology we use, we only need a very small team. We have a small team here in Barbados and a small team here in Jamaica to run the whole business. And when you look at the size of our business, you might wonder how that's possible. Well, it's simply because of the great technology we use and you only need a very few people instead of 40, 50, 60 people who would typically need if you were still doing everything on paper. Now, there's a short video on our website, and it's also on YouTube, that shows you in 90 seconds uh, more and better than if I kept speaking for the next 90 minutes about how we do peer-to-peer -peer lending. But I'm going to summarize it for you in a moment. But please feel free to go to our website, click on the invest page. You'll see this short video. It's only 90 seconds long. It's also on YouTube. Just put YouTube and carry lender, and you'll find this video. It shows you in really simple terms exactly how peer-to-peer -peer lending works. Uh, but if I go to the next slide, I'll bring you the key summary points. So how peer to peer lending works. Um, so instead of Joel lending Mark $10,000 and if Joel uh, um, uh, lends me that money and I don't pay him back, Joel's got one big $10,000 problem with his investment. It takes Joel's $10,000, lends Mark $100, lends Peter $100, lends Paul $100, lends Marlon $100 and spreads out his money across many, many different borrowers and therefore giving, his diverse, giving him diversification. As you'll all know, diversification is at the heart of any good investing strategy, i.e. not putting all your eggs in one basket and spreading out your investment across many, many different investments. That's exactly at the heart of how peer-to-peer -peer lending works. It spreads your money across many different borrowers. Now, when you're lending people money, sometimes something will go wrong. People uh, lose their job, they get sick, they die, uh, and they can't pay you back. And that's what our reserve fund is there for. In a moment, I'll tell you all about the success of our reserve fund over the last few years. But every borrower contributes that fund. Typically, it's about $500 for every $10,000 they borrow. And that reserve fund there is to protect the lenders. So when the inevitable happens, a borrower loses their job, gets sick, uh, dies, is not able to pay back the lenders, all of the repayments will be paid back from the reserve fund to the lenders. Since we started, every single borrower that's defaulted, which is a very small number, I'll give you the exact numbers very shortly, um, has been paid back out of that reserve fund in full back to the lenders, including all the principal and interest they're expecting. So, even through COVID, even through all of the tough times that we've had, no investor has ever lost a cent by a carry lend. They've always got back all of the return, principal and the interest they're expecting uh, in, and including from that reserve fund where a borrower defaults. Last point we always focus on when talking about peer to peer lending is high quality borrowers we attract. For our product here in Barbados, we're looking for prime, good quality borrowers. They've got three things in common. They've got a steady job, they've got good credit history, and then they can afford the loan they're applying for probably say, well, why do they come to you? Why don't they go to the bank and get a loan? Well, frankly, I worked for one of the banks for 25 years and the process of trying to get a small loan for a consumer from a bank is not very nice. It takes a lot of application forms, long forms, lots of documents going into the bank. And then it's a very inconvenient process. And then you wait and wait and wait for analysis. So it's a very slow process. What we've done is put the whole process online, 15 minutes, you can apply from your phone, anytime, anywhere, any place. Uh, and if you've done that, submit all your documents online, you'll get an answer from us the very next day, next working day to say, yes, you're approved, no, you're not approved, or hang on, you only uploaded one bank statement and we need to. We do all the checks, all the credit scoring, all the AML and KYC you would expect that a bank or another financial and services institution would do, but just do everything online, make the process safe, secure, and great experience for customers. 
These are our results over the last uh, three and a half, four years here in Barbados. Uh, first, the borrowing side. Uh, we've approved over 2,300 loans now. Over $42 million has been loaned out to Barbadian consumers. This year, our average loan size is around $22,000, and typically for uh, just over four and a half, five years, coming up to five years in average term. Interest rates are comparable to what you would pay for an unsecured loan here in Barbados from a bank or a credit union. One of the things that we, we're very strong on is making sure that we uh, only approve really high quality borrowers. And typically we turn down or decline, the bottom row on this, over half the people that apply for a loan. And you can see our track record over the last uh, four years there. I mentioned our reserve fund. Uh, our reserve fund is there to protect you if any, invest, any borrower cannot pay you back. It's over $1.85 million now sitting in cash with RBC, waiting uh, to pay out any uh, lenders where they've got to borrow the defaults. Our actual defaults, as you can see, is very, very low, only just over 2%. And that's a very good track record when you look at the banks in Barbados that have reported earlier this year, they have default rates of around about 7%. Uh, we were very proud of how low we've kept that default rate. Reserve fund stands at 7.75% of all loans outstanding. And we're projecting that our defaults will increase to just over 4% over the next five years. So we think we've got nearly double the coverage we need for the next five years. And that reserve fund keeps growing every month as we keep those defaults low. And uh, with Carryland, we've got over 600 uh, investors, 600 lenders, people just like you uh, investing into loans. A typical investor is investing around about $36,000, $37,000. Um, but they invest everything from a couple of thousand dollars up to $2 million with our largest investor. So any size, shape or form as investor is, is welcome. And they will earn the same kind of rate, whether you're a small investor or a large investor, you're earning the same rates. We've paid out nearly two and a half million dollars worth of interest in the last three years now to our lenders. And we're very proud of getting better returns for lenders in the current market conditions. And that has been very stable, even with the impacts from COVID. For we had a very short dip in our returns, very short uh, slowdown in our returns where they went to just around about seven and a half, seven three quarters for just two months. Now they're all the way back up to 8.3% cash return each month. That's on an annual basis. That's our growth over the last uh, three and a half, four years. We're very pleased with how things have gone. The blue line is uh, investors, people like you investing. The green line is the loans we've put out. And obviously there's a small gap as we would have a little bit of cash on hand waiting for borrowers to come in. And you can see we leveled out for a few months earlier this year when the severe impacts of lockdown and COVID happened. But as soon as uh, consumers in Barbados, both consumers wanting to borrow and consumers in wanting to invest, realized that they still had a job, uh, still had a paycheck, and uh, that the economy was still moving, that they came back in force and were growing again uh, at the pace we were pre-COVID. So we're very pleased with how things have performed during and after COVID. We always put this up. If you've got money still invested here in Barbados in a bank account, Frankly, you're only earning something like 0.1 or 0.01%. And your interest, even if you left $50,000 there for the next five years, is only going to be $25. You'll probably get a quarterly charge from the bank of probably more than that $25. If you invest it with Carryland on our typical returns at the moment, uh, you'd earn a return of around about $25,000 if you invested $50,000 today for the next five years. Uh, we think that's the most compelling reason to invest with Carryland. And based on our track record, we're, we're very, very pleased to be able to put those kind of numbers up. That's the end of my presentation. I said I would try and keep to 10 minutes. We've got a huge amount of information on our website, carrylen.com. Uh, we also hold a webinar every couple of weeks. It's about an hour long. It goes through everything I've just gone through, but over about the space of about an hour, it gives you very detailed information on how you invest, what you invest, what you're investing in, and how it works. You can ask me any questions you like during one of those sessions. And we, we hold them every couple of weeks for about an hour. Email us at info at carrylen.com. Ask to be put on the list, and we'll make sure you get on to the, uh, the next one of our webinars. Really appreciate the opportunity, Joel. Appreciate it. Uh, Invest Barbados for the opportunity to uh, give the diaspora a little bit of information today about Carryland and what we've been doing over the last three and a half, four years here in Barbados. Thank you. Thank you very much. You said you were a recovering banker, um, but I have to tell you that, that speaking personally, that gives me confidence in, in your knowledge of this part of the, um, the market. And I think that's one of the things that we in the diaspora are looking for is we're looking for confidence. We're looking for you know people that we can trust, um, and I know that you had s said to me earlier that uh, you know you're playing by the rules and, and hoping to be regulated. So maybe we'll come back and talk about that when we have some questions and answer time. I noticed that there's some questions in the chat, and I wanted to assure people that uh, we're not going to get to everything today. 
but we've and we will endeavor to put together a, a Q and A response and uh, get things out to, to everybody who's participating. It might be through the website or it might be through um, through through email. I'm going to move on just to keep things tight. And uh, our next speaker is Elridge Ben, and he's been uh, in several departments at the Barbados Workers uh, Cooperative Credit Union for the past 31 years. I'm not, I'm not sure that uh, Elridge is recovering quite yet. He's still quite in the in, in the mix of things. And I'm he's he's going to um, talk to us from the uh, credit union perspective. So we have two more speakers left on our panelists, and and uh, Elridge, uh, you're on. Yeah. I thank you very much, um, Joel. Um, I bring you greetings from the Barbados and Public Workers Cooperative Credit Union Limited, and it's indeed an honor and a privilege for me to be making these remarks to you this afternoon. Um, just a little brief history about myself before I go too deep into my presentation is that um, I have been living the dream. I'm working at a credit for the last 31 years. I have seen so many lives being transformed, um, ordinary lives being transformed, with a very simple philosophy of people helping people. And 31 years of giving hope where members need us most. This is a brief history about this um, credit union. It was during the recession of the 1970s uh, that the civil service in Barbados needed a financial institution that can provide them with reasonable financial services and hope in the future. And a call was made and answered. And in May of 1970, uh, this credit union came into being. And some from very humble beginnings, this a little old suitcase, which was our very first vault. The founding fathers and, measures, um, fathers and mothers and put measures in place for continuous growth. And today we are the largest um, credit union in Barbados and in the region with six branches, a subsidiary and state-of-the-art technology with over $1 billion in assets and over 1,000 members. And this year marked 50 years of providing hope for our members while growing at a rate of about 18% per annum. It is also ironic that in our 50th year of operation uh, that we are being called upon now more than ever to provide that hope for our members in a tangible way as we come to terms with the fall of this pandemic. But our members need not to fear because this credit union was created for times like these. This is what we do. We believe in the philosophy of people helping people and reassuring our members that this is where they belong. It is also our mission to go wherever our members need us. And it was back in November of 2017, we launched our first, the first of its kind, our mobile financial center. And to date, the only mobile financial service brand on the island. And this mobile unit allows us to operate all over Barbados from businesses and residential areas, wherever our members and prospectus members are, providing the same services as you do if you were to visit one of our brick and mortar branches, offering loans, new accounts, ATM services, and being that contact um, for the other branches. We have also reached out to our members in the diaspora to preach the gospel according to this credit union and providing them with the same hope. You are not far from our reach. And over the years, we have traveled and made presentations to Canada, USA, Caribbean, England, encouraging those persons in attendance to invest in Barbados and invest in the Barbados Public Workers Cooperative Credit Union Limited. For us, it is not about profit. It is our sole purpose to help our members enhance their financial, economic, and social well-being. This is what we do by providing the types of services to them that are available um, if you, whether you're in Barbados already overseas, this is our sole purpose. If you want to join us, if you want to join us, of course, you can just download the application form from our website, fill out the application form, have the documents notarized and send them back to us and we will make things happen for you. Now, what do we do? We provide finances, financing and investment products. We offer a complete range of services for every stage of your life. We have a saying here in the credit union, from the cradle to the grave and from the womb to the tomb, 
we have a product or service just for you. And one such investment is our home builders plan, the ultimate money maker, created to build wealth for our members. To build that wealth, we encourage our members to invest in real estate, the stock exchange, instruments that can provide them with great returns. In our premium plan, a five-year term deposit, this required a minimum deposit of 1,500 US dollars, with interest rates increasing for the first year from 1.25% to 1.75% per annum. And the interest earned on these investments are also tax-free. Um, we also recently launched our most recent investment plan. There's our executive platinum plan for the more affluent members who may have some cash just laying around but want to be wealthy. The minimum deposit is 50,000 US dollars. Interest rate increases from 1% for, for six months up to 1.75% for two years. And if you're a BARC member, which is a member of the Barbados Association of Retired Persons, you will get a 0.25% interest greater than the, the normal rate. And these rates are very competitive when we compare the, uh, the rates of other institutions, which are currently offering 0.01% returns on your investment. We are also available for members to offer financing at a very attractive risk. If you want to buy land or just, just to own a piece of the rock. We also provide financing for shelter whether you're building, renovating, or buying, we are there for you. And it's because of these simple things that we do and believe in that a few years ago, we were voted the best place to do business in Barbados. From the cradle to the grave, our children are the future. And hence, we invest with our youth program by providing scholarships and grants yearly to those children who are part of our program. We also provide various training activities for those children because we believe that those children are our future. We are accessible to our members no matter where they are. You can either call or, or sign up and call our systems and have access to your account 24 hours a day. Or through our online banking where you can have access to your accounts 24 hours a day can transfer money into your from one part of your account to another part of your account. And you can also transfer money from your account to another member's account um, within your account. We are accessible to our members either through the telephone systems. The, nine, the numbers are there, whether you're living in USA, the Caribbean, or Canada, or whether you're in UK, or you can even contact us through our contact center at contact at BPWCCL. Dot BB. Now you may ask yourself, how can I make an investment into our premium plan or our executive platinum plan? That is easy. You can either send us a personal check, a bank draft, a standing order, international postal order, wire transfer. But we also encourage our members, especially in the diaspora, to take advantage of our legal services, where you can have a, a POA, power attorney document drawn up, where you can have a trusted individual here in Barbados who can undertake your business for you while you are overseas. And we provide that service also at the credit union. And coming very soon is our international master debit card. And this will be launched sometime in early next year, where you can perform local or international transactions um, by having one of our cards. And pretty soon we also have some online application processing for our loans and much, much more. Live the dream. Save and invest in Barbados. Save and invest at the Barbados and Public Workers Cooperative Credit Union. We'll be there for you. In closing, let me thank you for your time and wish you a Merry Christmas, a prosperous New Year, and I pray that you and your families will remain safe during this period of great uncertainty. Again, I thank you. Thank you very much, Elridge. And uh, thanks for underscoring the fact that uh, you not only serve people locally in Barbados, but that you welcome the diaspora to, uh, to participate as well with the, uh, with the credit union. I'm gonna move on and uh, we're gonna uh, have our, our last speaker, 
uh, which is Hanif Moore, and he's the program development coordinator for Legacy Foundation. Legacy Foundation is the philanthropic arm of the Barbados Public Workers Cooperative Credit Union Limited. And I will in ask Hanif to take the mic and uh, come on in. Hey, Joel, thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Great to see so many participants on the webinar. And thank you to Invest Barbados for the invitation. For Legacy to speak to the diaspora, as we've done in the past, about investing in the people of Barbados, and primarily those in the socio, lower socioeconomic brackets. Legacy is part of the Barbados Public Workers Cooperative Credit Union group. The credit union in itself invests in the individual members. And there was a need for part of the credit union to invest in broader Barbados beyond the members. As Elrid said, we have over 100,000 members, which represents three quarters of the working age populace of Barbados. So we impact a lot of people. So legacy was really born out of that. So our mission really is about making a positive social impact that will leave a lasting impression. And we do this by investing in projects, whether they be from another charitable organization, a community group or community leader. But what we look for is sustainability. And we have three criteria which govern the decisions on how we will award funding. Um, they are either wellness, empowerment, or learning. Any one of those three qualifies you for applying for a, a grant from the foundation. They were left intentionally broad um, so that we could encap encompass so many more people. So many charities are cause specific. So we wanted to do something that would impact a whole lot more of uh, Barbadian communities. Our values are leadership, equity, and accountability. And we focus on accountability because we serve as the stewards for the donations made to Legacy. We are audited annually by KPMG auditors. And as a registered charity, we supply or audited financials to the regulator as required on an annual basis. Our goals are simple. They're about helping people. We award grants, we offer expertise, and we collaborate with other registered charities, nonprofits, and as I said, community groups and leaders that are seeking to address some of the most pressing needs in Barbadian society today. What we found was uh, the pandemic highlighted some significant issues when we were forced to adapt within the last few months to address some needs that we didn't previously cater for, but we successfully launched three projects spending in excess of $150,000 to assist Barbadians who really needed that additional support uh, during the pandemic. Some of our successes to date, we approved a total of 20 projects. We've actually just approved an additional three with a total number of applicants now up to 50. To date, we've invested 850,000. That goes up again, by another 150,000 as of the last couple of weeks in project funding. Some of our key projects, we did two at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, one with the gastroenterology unit and another with the dialysis unit. Um, and that total was 320,000 for those two projects. St. Leonard's Boys School, uh, and I'm, I'm sure there are one or two alumni out there uh, listening. We invested 77,000 
and we continue to work with all of our uh, project partners. We created a, a music studio and lab at the school, which has led to many of those young men looking at music as a career. Some have gone on to do composing, arranging, um, and they've actually created a pop band, which is very good if you have the ch ever, chance, have, ever have the chance to, to hear them perform. 50,000 was given to Charles F. Broom, where we created the first computer resource lab as an independent standalone building. And that's benefited uh, those primary age students with access to computer technology and how to properly use technology rather than just being on a device or a tablet for uh, YouTube and, and TikTok as the young people tend to do. For 2020 and beyond, we're looking to continue to grow the foundation's donor base. And this is where we appeal to uh, members of the diaspora I've had a number of sessions in collaboration with uh, Public Workers Credit Union in Atlanta and in Toronto, Canada, discussing how members of the di Barbados diaspora can invest back into the country. We want to increase the number of successful applicants. We find it a challenge of people finding us so we want to build awareness of the foundation and we hope we can do that through uh, the diaspora as well. And of course, to strengthen the links between the foundation and all of our group companies, uh, which include Capita Financial Services and Capita Insurance Brokers. So we, we talk about togetherness because together, us and you, we can make that difference to support local communities, spread the word about legacy. And of course, we encourage you to join us. I will be sharing some information with Invest Barbados on how you can donate, but you're also welcome to check our website, which is legacybarbados.org, where you can find my email and you can make direct contact with me or find me through Invest Barbados. So on that note, I wanna say thank you um, to you all for participating and to thank Invest Barbados for thinking of philanthropy as an investment channel. I wanna wish you all uh, a happy holidays and all the best for a much better 2021. Joel, over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anif. I think that, well, that concludes the, uh, the four panelists that we had for today. And we have a few minutes left that we're going to um, try and get into Q&A. But I want to underscore a few things. I mean, this is about Bajans helping Bajans. This is about, you know, knowing that, that our investments in Barbados are in a well-regulated market, that we can own a piece of the rock, and that uh, our opportunities to invest in Barbados uh, include charitable and philanthropic work in, in charities, uh, for example, of, like the Barbados Canada Foundation and others in the US and so on, we can find ways of linking back to, uh, to Barbados. When we do this, we don't only help in ourselves, we'll help, we'll help, them help in Barbados. So these are some of the, the, the key things and key messages. So I said, uh, I noticed that there's a few questions still in the uh, channel in terms of, you know, how, how does this work? How does this uh, uh, re relate to, to, you know, other credit unions and so on? And, and, and there are uh, other uh, organizations. I do know that Invest Barbados has a, a, a tremendous list of uh, charities and foundations that they keep on their uh, website as well. For those of, uh, of us who are not f uh, in, in Barbados on the charitable and in, 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 uh, on contribution side. Uh, Ken, are you uh, there? Ah, uh, yes, I am on. Okay. Um, How about you have help been, me with the Q and A? Yep. Yeah, I think uh, some of the panelists have actually been answering the questions as we go along. I have one question coming out of the UK from Machine. Um, he asked with regards to Caroland and with regards to the Barbados Public Workers Cooperative Credit Union. 
does the UK government allow British people to transfer money to Caroline to invest? And also um, with Caroline, um, with Grass Caroline, can the UK can the UK diaspora invest in these two instruments? I guess it starts with Mark and then go on to Eldridge. Yeah, uh, thanks, Ken. Uh, so good question. Uh, yes, you can uh, invest from Caroline from anywhere, provided you have a bank account here in Barbados through which to put your Barbados dollars to invest. Uh, at the moment, we can only facilitate, or currently we're only facilitating Barbados dollar accounts um, through a local bank account. We are uh, in the process of registering for issuing a local bond, uh, and we are hoping that that will have a US dollar option on that as well, but we need the required uh, permissions to do that. Uh, when that comes, we will post details on that. So currently, uh, Barbados dollars via a Barbados dollar bank account, any money from anywhere can invest. Thank you. Aldridge? Yes, you can also um, invest into two products, the two um, investments I mentioned. Of course, if you are a member of the credit union, and I would have highlighted ways in which you can become a member, um, and the ways in which you can also send those funds to us either by a personal check, bank draft, or you can wire the funds directly to Barbados or international postal order. Okay, thank you. I'm seeing here from Hallam, uh, as a Canadian, can I access the ISM prior to the DSC integration? Marlon, can you address that? Yes, I, I was actually just about to answer it, type the answer. Um, for the, the international securities market, it's specifically designated for sophisticated purchasers and you, you need to invest directly in, in, in US, well, hard currency, be it US dollars, Canadian dollars, pounds, sterling, euros, or any other hard currency. Right, right now, the companies that are listed on our international securities market are basically technical listings in that they are, they're there, they're listed, but they're, they're, um, they've, they've not basically opened up for trading of the securities. But as, but as the markets develop, and as I said, that's one of the reasons we're looking to get the designations in, in these various markets. As the markets, as the market develops, we, there will be creating opportunities for persons outside of Barbados to, to invest directly, well, through a, through a, a broker um, to invest directly in these companies. So that is the plan. But as, as, a, as it is right now, those companies that are listed now are technical listings. They're, they're listed specifically for for structuring transactions and they've, they've used the international securities market for, for those for structuring of transactions and not necessarily for um, raising capital um, for persons to invest in those companies. I hope I've answered your question. If not, you, I was just going to put my email address so you can, we can talk for, um, directly on the matter. So I'll do that now. Okay. I'm seeing a question here from Luke um, with regarding the legacy charity. What is the efficiency of the service? I.e., how much of the funds input uh, reach the charity recipient? For each hundred dollars, how much is used for operational expenses, and how much is re uh, how much reaches the person in need? Hanif, can you? Uh, Absolutely. Hi, that? Luke. Hi, Luke. Thank you for your question. Um, we legacy is unique in our operation that for donor funding, 100% goes to benefit the, the project or the charity. With Barbados Public Workers Cooperative Credit Union being our parent entity, uh, they fund all of the operational costs for legacy. So private donors, 100% guaranteed, goes to the um, project or the charity. Thanks very much. Um, there are quite a few more questions, but I think time is running out. So what I would like is that we will go through all of these questions and work with the panelists to ensure that your questions are answered. I'd like to just turn over to Joel as moderator to um, wrap up and tidy up things. And we are sure we'd look at all the questions and get back to the people who have posed them directly. Thank you, Ken. Um, I just want to say thank you to all the people who showed up on a, on a Saturday 
for this. Uh, it was uh, and, and a thank and a special thanks to Invest Barbados for actually organizing this and bringing the resources together and bringing the panelists together and giving me the opportunity to, to be here with you. So thanks to the members of the Invest Barbados team. Thanks to the panelists. Thanks to the, the, the attendees. I think this is the beginning of a dialogue or at least you know, uh, uh, some, somewhere in the middle of this dialogue for some people it's been going on for a while. Lots of questions are out there and we'll endeavor to, uh, to, uh, to make this all work with you as we go forward. So thanks again. Um, you have ways of, uh, of re reaching Invest Barbados as the hub. As I said, some of this is investing in companies, investing in people. Set, setting up organizations and companies like we've done in, in Barbados, providing jobs. Uh, these are all things that, that, that uh, you can do that give back and also give you an opportunity to, to, to profit as well in, in one way or another. Thank you for coming and God bless and best of the season to you. Ladies and gentlemen, we're done for today. Thank you.